Today we're talking about an ancient society, hundreds of times older than humanity itself, with distinct cultures, societies, and clans, right under our noses this entire time. Atlantis? No, not Atlantis. That shit's fake. I'm talking about sperm whales. Humans built social barriers, like culture and class, to separate who is the in the in-group from the out-group. Sperm whales have social barriers in the form of unique calls to separate us from them. Humans say it takes a village to raise a child, while sperm whales literally babysit for each other in matriarchal communities. And these communities even hunt in groups and pass information down across generations. Oh, and humans have deadbeat dads? Well, sperm whale males are solitary and literally do nothing as far as child rearing goes. Despite evolutionarily parting ways over 100 million years ago, we're finding more and more uncanny similarities between humans and sperm whale societies. Except, while human linguistic culture is about 350,000 years old, sperm whale society is literally millions of years old. They've had a long time to cook, and we're only now beginning to appreciate the true complexity of their society. Yet, most of this complexity we cannot see, because the ocean is but huge. So how do scientists piece together a globe-spanning culture with millions of individuals when everyone is essentially invisible? You might find that the answer is music to your ears. I'm Rowan, Marine Bio Master Student at UC San Diego, and this is Explain. In the early 2000s, Dr. Hal Whitehead stood at the edge of his research vessel in the quiet waters of the Galapagos Islands with a pair of headphones pressed tightly against his ears. He was hunting for sperm whale calls, rhythmic clicks that occasionally cut through the silence. Then he noticed something interesting. Despite them all being of the same species, occupying the same small region of sea, there were at least two unique patterns of clicks, patterns that thousands of individuals somehow all knew. He would later call these patterns codas. When he put it all together, he discovered an entire sperm whale social system completely new to science, clans. Now, a family or social unit typically consists of 10 adults and their kids, but clans are whole communities made of multiple families. And in that week, there had not been one, not two, but three sperm whale clans present in the Galapagos. For simplicity, let's call these guys green, blue, and these little guys we call red. And I know there's not a lot of red, but trust me, they will be important later. Okay, back to Dr. Whitehead. As any good scientist would, he began to look for other similarities between clans. As it turns out, green likes to hang with green, and blue likes to hang with blue. Seems like sperm whale clans have cliques too. Not, well, not cliques. Cliques. He also found that they had different shit rates. AKA eating grates, but shit rates is funnier. Green tended to shit a bunch during certain seasons of the year, while Blue's poop schedule was a little bit more conserved. They also had different foraging strategies. While Green preferred to hunt all at once, Blue seemed to like staggering babysitting and hunting duties. Unsurprisingly, Green Clan showed a lot lower reproductive success. Oh, you know what I could really go for? Giant squid! Oh, that sounds so good! We haven't had a really good group hunt out in so long! Oh my god, let's all go! Girls hot! Wait, who's gonna babysit? Oh, crap. Eh, you know what? He's old enough. Kid, there's food in the fridge. Don't call me. Uh, mom? Beyond the Galapagos, researchers found a whole world of sperm whale clans. Literally, there were seven clans all across the Pacific with a total of 150,000 females, roughly 20,000 per clan. Now, green and blue clans stay near the Galapagos. Remember this tiny red clan though? Those guys are found all across the Pacific. Clans have specific geographic preferences. However, unlike humans, conflicts between clans and social units have never been documented. Clans whose territories do overlap make their codas as distinct from their neighbors as possible, likely to more strongly assert that division between us and them. But like, respectfully, you know? Everyone's still peaceful, and it's really more to avoid confusion than anything else. But to be clear, codas are not languages. These aren't messages. Rather, clan codas are the sperm whale version of flags, markers of identity separating the in-group from the out-group. Again, not a language, but still a universally understood system of social barriers. Now, I've thrown the term society around quite a bit, but can we really say that sperm whales have a society? Well, scientifically. Well, scientifically, 
What is a society? In a recent anthropological paper, Dr. Mark Moffat defines a society as groups whose constituent individuals recognize each other as members and that maintain control over access to a physical space. This definition includes baboons, meerkats, mole rats, and yes, humans. But Dr. Whitehead argues that maybe that second bit about territory is counterproductive. Unlike us silly land mammals, marine mammals like orcas and sperm whales don't fight over space because, again, the ocean is fucking huge. So territoriality shouldn't be a universal indicator for society. Instead, he emphasizes the concept of an anonymous society, one where all individuals don't need to know every member personally, but still understand who is and is not part of the society. Like how ants use pheromones as markers, membership, and how humans use flags and clothing. You don't need to know a guy personally to know that he's wearing the wrong sports jersey. Humans and sperm whales are one of the few species with anonymous societies, which are rare, but can be very big. And you know what they say about great size. It comes with a ton of cultural variation. Just like how societies in the Americas, Europe, Asia, and Australia developed unique cultures, sperm whales in the Pacific, Atlantic, and Indian Oceans could have unique cultures from each other. In fact, we see that sperm whales in the Mediterranean are getting pretty weird with it already. While male sperm whales typically leave their families in their teens to migrate north, Mediterranean whales have no north to go to, so they've developed a unique co-ed community. We also need to keep in mind that just because a clan speaks the same language doesn't mean they're culturally identical. We see cultural differences between human linguistic groups all the time, like within the island of Ireland and within Yiddish communities all across Europe. So there's plenty of reason to think that sperm whale clans have their own dialects and subcultures as well. Speaking of subcultures, Human groups tend to define themselves in contrast to one another. Throughout history, we see factions deliberately adopt strong contrasting behaviors. Autocratic versus democratic, communist versus capitalist, goth versus preppy. This phenomenon has a name, schismogenesis, meaning the creation of schisms. Since we know that genetics and environmental factors aren't what drives sperm whale clan differences, maybe schismogenesis is. All said, Sperm whales have a greater capacity for culture than we initially thought. Heck, they're more similar to humans than we initially thought. Because, again, the ocean is fucking huge, but the world is kind of small. We're on the scene of God's favorite cosmic soap opera, remember? And sometimes, the writing gets repetitive. Sperm whale societies are made of thousands of members across large areas. Members who can tell if a stranger is part of their clan just by ear alone, and know how to act based on their membership. And that's just what we know about the Galapagos sperm whales, which represents a fraction of the global population. Who knows what else science will learn in other oceans. So, if you still have your fingers crossed about an ancient underwater society, screw Atlantis, this is it. Right here, a 20 plus million year old society of intelligent marine mammals with unique regional cultures found all around the world and who've inspired so many human myths and stories. So what more do you want?